All right, welcome back. So in the last part, we defeated Erica, and got our fourth, or no, third Kanto gym badge. Um, yeah, we've been going through gym leaders a lot faster. Um, I think it's just a matter of Kanto is a lot more streamlined. Um, there's really not a lot to do in between gyms in Kanto. And I think just in general, like, getting from one city to the next is a little shorter. Uh, just, I think, due to the size constraints. Because um, Kanto was scaled down quite a bit. And that's especially noticeable in uh, the Viridian Forest, like I've mentioned a few times. So once you get past those little pillar things, uh, that's when um, the hill takes over. Um, so if you're not actively going in a certain direction, gravity will take you down. Um, if you want to avoid most of the trainers, stay on the right side. There's definitely far fewer trainers on, uh, on the bicycle path than there were in Gen 1, and I think... The bikers are literally the only class of trainers that we're going to see. Um, they mostly have, like, magmars and um, poison types like uh, popping and wheezing and stuff. Unfortunately, I did kind of forget to uh, get Feraligator back in the party, so I don't really have any uh, strong types against fires, fire types. So we're just going to use Earthquake and call it good. <laughs> See, isn't it good that we gave Ursa Ring <laughs> Earthquake? I think so. Because it's super effective and who wouldn't be terrified of a bear <laughs> that could cause an earthquake? I mean, who wouldn't be terrified of a bear <laughs> just in general? Unless, you know, you're viewing them from a safe distance and can see their cute little ears. So I am trying to get uh, Gaster leveled up. Um, I believe Ghastly evolves at 25. So we're pretty close to getting uh, a Haunter. Sadly, um... In order to get Gengar, you do have to trade Haunter, uh, so that's... I know there is a way to do it, but I'm not really sure exactly how, and even then, I'm not too concerned about it. I think... I think what we have works well. Well enough, at least. Fight me! Alright, um... Oh! I ended up getting poisoned. Um... While... Tr while in that battle, and... Due to, uh... <laughs> the bike path's, uh... Gravity, I ended up, uh, moving a bunch, and I kind of got flustered. While trying to, uh, open up the menu. So yeah, this is probably one of the worst places to get a Pokemon poisoned. Now, the reason why I cut out the last one was because he basically had all the same Pokemon that this guy and the previous guy had. So, I didn't really bother keeping it in. Uh, even with uh, your stat change, I can still one-shot you. And Gaster grew to level 25. So, as I said, um, uh, Ghastly evolves at level 25, as we see here. So that's the second reason why I kept this battle in. 
particular, just so we could see uh, Gaster evolving. Alright, I think that's all the trainers on Cycling Road, other than the one, other than the gatekeeper at the bottom. I think, yeah, I think that's literally the, all of them, otherwise, so. We're fearless highway stars. Who are you? We're famous among circles. We're famous in circles, uh, in our circles. Alright. Um, I can't remember what this guy has. Obviously, he has a coffin. Small coffin. Alright. So, today, um, we're actually going to be taking on the next gym. Um, yeah, we're, we're just plowing through these gyms like crazy. Uh, again, I, I think it's because Kanto is a lot more streamlined, since we don't have to deal with, uh, tedious, uh, Team Rocket, uh, stuff in between all the gyms. Um, so, you might be wondering, uh, well, it looks like we're heading towards Fuchsia City, and we are. That's what we're planning on doing, is taking down the Fuchsia City Gym Leader. But, if you might remember from Gen 1, Koga was the Fuchsia City Gym Leader. Well, who... who's replaced, uh, Koga? Um, now that he's a part of the Elite Four. Well, uh, we'll find that out, like, in-game, but I'll just say it now, because it's not really that big of a secret. Also, Gaster, could you please use Hypnosis? Um, anyways, the, the gym leader for, uh, Fuchsia City, Jim, is actually Koga's daughter. Which, I don't know if she was ever mentioned in Gen 1. I don't think she was, but I could be wrong on that. Anyways, um... She has, uh, taken over the position as gym leader. Um, and we'll kind of see what the gimmick of the gym is when we get there. But, um... Uh, Fuchsia City's kind of gone downhill <laughs> since the events of Gen 1. Um, we'll, and again, we'll see that when we get into the town. Sludge. That, I think, is the move that caused the poison. Yeah. I don't know if it's just a high chance of poison or if it's, like, guaranteed. But man, is it annoying. I hate poison. Like as a status move, or as a status. All right, so that's it for, uh, for, um, Cycling Road. Er, there we go, poison's gone, yay. <laughs> I feel like if a trainer poisons one of your Pokemon and you, you know, win, they should have to pay to, uh, you know, <laughs> heal, heal your uh, Pokemon's poison, since, you know, their Pokemon is the one that caused it. Knocked out. Pretty sure Brandon caught one of these things. I'm not really sure why. <laughs> I think he was kind of keeping to his one Pokemon per route thing that he likes to do, and, you know, that's fine, but 
he... I think he... He didn't really need knocked out, in my opinion. But, you know, whatever makes him happy. So, I was kind of sad that that reformula didn't <laughs> knock knocked out. That would have been funny. Alright. Hey, look. Went up to 26. I do want to try and take care of all of these trainers since um, they they keep looking at me funny. They deserve to, to get their butts kicked. <laughs> Don't do well. All right, so I kind of use and this a bit of a slower battle because I do use uh, hypnosis on Do Duo just so I can get some healing on one of my po one or two of my Pokemon. Just because... I wasn't sure how far away I was going to be from the Pokemon Center, and I didn't want to run into a uh, tough battle um, without enough uh, help on some of my Pokemon. Alright. Get out of there, Gaster. And unfortunately, Doduo, I believe, is half normal. I think a lot of flying types are half normal. At least these, like... Bird Pokemon, like this, are generally half normal. Um... So unfortunately, our gas, er, our ghost type moves won't work on them. All right, I can't remember if I keep switching out or not. Okay, no, I, I think at this point I decide. Okay, I just want to kind of get the, get this moving along. Has two Doe Duos and the evolved form, Dodrio. Right? Yeah, Dodrio. I wanna know kinda how that works. Like why why does a third head sprout? I mean you like play in some toxic waste or something? I mean, honestly, you could probably chop that up, uh, chop up a lot of these evolutions too. Did they play in some toxic waste? And you know, um, based on the uh, the history of war throughout uh, the Pokemon world, um, you could maybe chop up Pokemon as being former animals that played in. Uh, in, like, toxic waste or something and mutated. I I could buy that. Maybe. See? I look just like her now. Alright. So, yeah, that's kind of a hint as to what this next gym is going to be like. Um. So, there's going to be a whole bunch of Janines in the gym. And your job is to find the real one. I know where the real one is, so we're going to be fighting all the fake ones first. Because I like to show off the battles. Usually. Um, and then we'll go and find the actual Janine. So this used to be the house of the Warden for the, uh, the Safari Zone. Well, um, he quit running the Safari Zone just like that, uh, and I think he went traveling or something. You know, fair enough, dude. You gotta enjoy your golden years. Because I think he was, like, an old man in the 
in Gen 1. Because I think we had to find his teeth, right? I think that was the thing. Considering it's Fuchsia's main attraction. Yeah, um, that... Maybe your economy really shouldn't be based off of one thing. <laughs> so I, this was definitely another spot where they cut for size constraints, was uh, the Safari Zone. There, uh, unfortunately or fortunately, depending on how you look at it, um, Safari Zone, and there is no Safari Zone in the game. Like, there's the the place in um, Johto where you have the, it's kind of like the Safari Zone, but it's, I think it's like just bug-type bug Pokemon. Um, I don't remember, because we didn't really do much with it. Or at least I didn't, and I don't think Brandon really did anything with it either. Yeah, Brandon, Brandon largely just did what he was supposed to to get the gym badge, grind a little, and that was about it. Alright, so as you can see, there are quite a number of Janines. Um, and all but one of them is, you know, are they're all fakes other than the one. Now, your immediate sort of thinking would probably be, well, she must be the middle one because that's where the gym leader makes sense to be. Well, you would be wrong. Um, Janine, ironically, is actually on the left side. So, she's kind of the farthest one away from you. AKA, she's the hardest one to get to, which, you know, makes sense, I suppose. So, that's... That's how you find her. She's on the... And she's the farthest away from you. Like, that you could easily get to. Alright, I'm switching... Uh... Cadabra up to the front, because... I do kind of, at this point, I am kind of wanting to get through the episode, or get through the gym. Uh, Camper Barry. This, uh, this kid is a little confused, but it's okay. Alright, um, these first two have a Nido Queen and a Nido King. I believe Nido King is more focused on attack, while Nido Queen is more of a tank. Um, and focuses on defense. I want to say that's uh, that's their sort of relationship. Hey, okay, nice one. All right, so you can head down, or you can head to the left. So yeah, that Janine over on the left over there is the actual Janine. Last Alice. Once you defeat a gym leader, you can't fight the rest of them. So if you want to fight all the trainers in the gym, you have to fight them before you fight the, the gym leader themselves. Gloom. What would this girl has? Uh, Arbok. I think she just kind of has some random Pokemon. A lot of these will have themes to them. Um, like the the first two, one had Nido Queen, one had Nido King. This one, though, is kind of a random assortment of Pokemon that have poison type moves, I guess. She has two glooms and a Arbok for some reason. She's trying to make uh, 
I, I highly doubt this was not the, uh, the intention, but, I mean, two round things and a snake-like thing? You might be... that. Uh, I highly doubt that that's what they were going for, but it's still kind of funny to think about. Alright. Um, anyways, uh, this girl, the last Linda, Linda has the Bulbasaur line. Now this theme makes sense. Makes sense for a kid's game, at least. <laughs> and they all go down pretty easily. Like, that's the thing with this, with a lot of the Kanto gems, is the fact that at this point, you probably have some strong Pokemon. Especially since the Elite Four is much higher level than most of Kanto. So, if you were preparing for the Elite Four, you would have been more than set to deal with uh, most of Kanto. And you're only going to get more levels as you go. Although, um, when you start getting this high up in levels, it's kind of hard to level up even more. Because uh, often the trainers, and especially the, uh, the random encounter, are never that high. So it, it can be kind of difficult to level yourself up. Alright, and Linda is defeated. Oh, I lost. Alright, so you must be the real Janine. Foo 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 foo. I'm sorry to disappoint you. I'm only joking. I'm the real deal. Janine of Fuchsia's Gin. That's me. Alright, let's fight. So, Janine is really nothing too special. Um, first Pokemon is a Crobat. And that's probably the most interesting Pokemon she has. Um, and it goes down pretty easily. <laughs> All of her Pokemon will go down pretty easily just because she doesn't really have much. And we just have a very strong Psychic type that can defeat them. Ariados, um, which I think Koga had an Ariados as well, so it's a nice little uh, father-daughter moment right there. I think she has two Weezings, and then she has a Venomoth, which I believe is her ace Pokemon, but I could be wrong on that. I know it's the highest level she has. Dire hit. Wow, that's not gonna help you at all. <laughs> I don't even know what dire hit does. I know it's like one of those one-use items. Like uh like X speed or X accuracy, that type of stuff. I know we picked one up, but I think I got rid of it for space. Yep. Weezing. Weezing. Alright. Uh yeah. There's no reason to hold back in this fight. Um, we have plenty of uh, moves. I can easily take these guys out. And she used a second Weezing? Yeah. I, it seemed really odd to me that it would choose two Weezings in a row. Why wouldn't they, like, split them up a little? Alright. And with that, we have now defeated Janine, uh, our fourth Kanto gym badge. Uh, fourth episode in a row that we've gotten a gym badge. Pretty, uh, pretty nice. Um, I need to see like what our next uh, destination is. Let's see, because we obviously have Viridian City, which is the last one. You have to do that one last. Um. 
So I think we're heading towards... We're going to be heading towards, um... Lavender Town, which doesn't have a gym, but we still need to go through it. Um, just because that's kind of the... The route that I think the game wants you to take. Because I think you kind of go in a backwards... In a spiral. Out. Um... So, we'll probably be doing Misty next, although I'm not sure we're going to be able to get to Misty in the next episode. But, we'll see. So, um, again, uh, make sure to check out Rando's channel and watch the rest of the series. Um, and I will see you guys in the next part. Thank you for watching.